Let's review. The index of refraction is the ratio of the speed of light through a vacuum compared to its speed through some transparent medium. Because light propagates at its highest speed through a vacuum, indices of refraction are usually greater than 1. And if they're not greater than 1, they're equal to 1. They're never less than 1. Snell's law expresses the relationship between the incident and refractive angles and the indices of refraction at a boundary. You'll want your calculator in degree mode when using Snell's law. Let's try an example. Light in air is incident on diamond at 43 degrees. Find the angle of refraction. What I've drawn here is a boundary indicated by the solid line and a normal indicated by the dashed line. We are supposed to know that the index of refraction of air is very nearly 1 and we're told the index of refraction of diamond. So it says that light is incident on the diamond. In other words, it starts out in the air at an angle of 43 degrees relative to the normal. And then it travels into the diamond. Now, when light goes from a medium of lower index of refraction to a medium of higher index of refraction, it's going to bend towards the normal. So the answer that we're expecting should be less than 43 degrees. If that isn't what our calculator tells us, we know we've done it wrong. So let's use Snell's law. We need to solve this equation for theta sub r. So to do that, I'm first going to divide both sides by n sub r. Then we don't want the sine of theta sub r. We want theta sub r. So we need to take the inverse sine of both sides in this fashion. From this point, it's simply a matter of plugging the numbers in, making sure our calculator is in degree mode, and rounding to the correct number of significant figures. Sure enough, our refractive angle is less than 43 degrees. This time, we have light that starts out in water and it's incident on cubic zirconia at an angle of 31 and a half degrees. We're told what the angle of refraction is and we're told what water's index of refraction is. We need to find the speed of light in cubic zirconia. It says that the light starts out in water and travels into this other medium, cubic zirconia. We're told the incident angle and the refractive angle and we're told the index of refraction for water. And the question is, what's the speed of light in cubic zirconia? Well, to find that, we need to first figure out what the index of refraction of cubic zirconia is. So let's use Snell's law. I've gone ahead and put in water for the incident medium, cubic zirconia for the refracting medium. If we put the numbers in and solve for the index of refraction of cubic zirconia, we get cubic zirconia to have an index of refraction of 2.195. And we would expect an index of refraction for cubic zirconia that is larger than the 1.333 index for water because we're told that the light bends toward the normal so we're expecting a bigger index of refraction for cubic zirconia. The index of refraction is simply a ratio of the speed of light through empty space compared to the speed of light through the medium. So now, if we use the definition of the index of refraction, solve it for the speed of light in the medium, we'll get this expression, and there's the speed of light through cubic zirconia. Notice that it is less than 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. If you ever calculate a speed greater than 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, you've done something wrong.